Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz here with Dave's Faves, my very favorite recordings of specific repertoire, the ones I reach out and grab when I want to listen. And right now, what I want to tell you about are the Mendelssohn Piano Concertos. And the recording is this one, Jean-Yves Thibaudet with Herbert Blomstedt, whose rather dull Brahms cycle I just excoriated. Um, with the Leipzig Gewand House. You also get the, the Variation Sirius, which are Mendelssohn's greatest set of variations, and the Rondo Capriccioso, which is just delicious, as are both piano concertos. This is a great, great recording. And no one is ever going to care because no one cares about the Mendelssohn piano concertos. That to me is sad. I love the Mendelssohn Piano Concertos. And, you know, the first, particularly, is a, is a, it's a little masterpiece. The problem with the Mendelssohn Piano Concertos is, first of all, they're a little bit short. I mean, the first one is, is less than 20 minutes long. Usually it's about, oh, I don't know. Well, I don't even have to look. It's, it's a little bit less than 20 minutes, usually. And, and it's in, you know, three movements in one. They're all run together, as they are in the Violin Concerto which is sort of Mendelssohn's great masterpiece in the concerto form that he invented. You know, we, we don't give Mendelssohn any credit, but this wonderful, pithy, delightful concerto form, three movements packed into one with, with no opening tutti. He starts right off with the solo instrument. So it's not a classical concerto form at all. It's a very, very different kind of approach to writing. In, in the classical concerto, the orchestra and the solo are equals, and the first movement establishes their relationship and their right of participation in an ongoing dialogue. In the Mendelssohn version, the solo is right up there for the beginning. You know it's a concerto, and you know that the solo is going to be featured, and the orchestra is is an accompaniment, avowedly an accompaniment, not the same independence of character as, for example, in a Beethoven or a Mozart concerto. The orchestra creates the environment in which the solo functions. But, you know, it may be a slightly lighter form or maybe a less intellectual form, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's definitely pithier. And Mendelssohn, you know, invented it, and it was his, and he was a genius at writing that kind of music. He really was. And these two piano concertos are just delightful. The problem with, with the second concerto is that it sounds an awful lot like the first, only it's about five minutes longer. So while it has, it has the length necessary to give it a little bit of extra weight, and therefore, you know, to the extent it means anything, depth, I suppose, um, the first is the one that became popular because it's so short and so much fun, and the second sounds sort of like more of the same, but I don't care. That means for me, all that means is that I can play either one of them whenever I feel like it and get just as much enjoyment out of them. And I, I think they are just fun, fun pieces to listen to. And their, their consistent downgrading upsets me. It really does. But as I've always said, you know, it, it, there's only good music and bad music. And boy, is this good music. So anyway, th this performance is a knockout. There, the other really great one that I've always loved was, was Rudolf Serkin's Mendelssohn Piano Concerto. That's fantastic as well. It really is. But this, of course, is stunningly well recorded. That one is getting sort of old and fusty. And Blomstedt and the Gavant House are wonderful. Absolutely wonderful here where they weren't so wonderful in their Brahms cycle. And Thibaut Day is fantastic. I don't know. I, I like to think that maybe it's his experience doing, you know, a lot of jazz and things like that and Debussy and contemporary music that serves him so well in Mendelssohn because he's not afraid of rhythm, <laughs> you know, which you really need in this music. He's not afraid of, of, of accent. He's not afraid to let the music be a little bit glittery and glitzy and, and virtuosic when it wants to be. There's such positive, overwhelmingly positive, joyous performances. Simply spectacular. You know, it's interesting. They're in minor keys, both of these things, G minor and D minor. But that's not how they come off. They, I mean, the minor key business just comes off as, as fun turbulence. It's like, it's like when you're outside during a really good thunderstorm. You know, and the wind is 
blowing past and the, the, the you know the rain is whipping along and you see the lightning and the thunder and instead of instead of being you know sort of feeling like the weather's miserable or being intimidated it's just it's just exhilarating you know the, the, it's the electricity in the air and the power of the wind and it just makes you feel fabulous absolutely fabulous it's elemental it's that elemental force and you get that here and people don't think of Mendelssohn of course as being all that elemental he, he, he has the impression he gives the impression as the reputation for being you know kind of uh, kind of wimpy but there's nothing wimpy about this music at all it is elemental it's exciting it's bracing and that's what these performances have just that exuberance and vitality and youthful freshness. And I think they're spectacular. I adore them. So I can't recommend them strongly enough. And they are my favorites when I want to hear this music, which is actually fairly frequently. I really like these pieces. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.